If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, June 20th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. With the World University Games coming up in less than a month, we wanted to give you the opportunity to learn more about the people representing the United States in the pool in Kazan, Russia. We've talked to a few swimmers and coaches in the past week on the Morning Swim Show, and today in the Finis Monitor, we'll be joined by women's assistant coach Kevin Bloom. He spent many years coaching at Rattler Aquatics in Southern California, and now he's the head coach of Coronado Navy, a swim association in San Diego. And he joins us now on Skype from just up the road in Flagstaff, Arizona. Coach, it's good to see you. How are you today? I'm great, Jeff. Thanks. How are you doing? All right. So tell us about this um, altitude training you have your team doing up there in Flagstaff. Uh, well, with this new team, it's a small group. I've just got a group of six girls ages roughly 13 to 15. Uh, 90 minute workout, so we're keeping it kind of kind of short and sweet. Don't want to push them too hard at this age, but we're having a good time bonding and one of the Chinese teams is out here, so they've having some fun, you know, seeing those kids train as well. Yeah, that's always the great thing about training with Flagstaff. You always, you can get, you sometimes get to uh, see different countries there and then um, experiencing different cultures. I'm sure those young kids are really soaking all that up. They definitely are. They tried to trade caps, but they were unsuccessful today. No, oh, that's okay. And they'll, I'm sure some of these kids will be um, hopefully swimming in the Olympics where trading caps is, is one of the big things and they can make good on that, that dream they have of getting new caps. Well, that's always the goal. So uh, what's the big meet that your, your team is training for this summer? What's the purpose of the, tra of the uh, altitude training? Again, the training trip is more just for a fun team bonding trip. Um, with my really young team here, my young group, it's, I think we're just going to take it to JOs. Um, I've got a couple kids at the sectional level, so we may hit that meet, but I think we're going to focus more on our local JOs here as, as, a, as I'm new to this area. So we'll keep it regional, local. Okay. Um, and I'm sure right now, I, I know you've got, as a head coach of the team, you're, you're worried about your kids at home, but I'm sure your mind's already halfway to Russia right now. It has been for a while. You know, I'm trying to keep things focused on, on Coronado and, and on my current team, and I've been doing a pretty good job of that. So, um, you know, I ran into Paul Stafford, who's also on the staff at a, a meet a couple weeks ago, and we chatted for a few minutes, so that was good. I'm definitely excited. What's the excitement level for you? I mean, if, correct me if I'm wrong, this is your first international coaching gig, right? It is definitely my first international coaching gig. Um, the excitement level is huge. The, the, the coaching staff that's going to be there and, and the swimmers have been doing what they do very well for a long time, so I feel very fortunate to be able to go along on this trip. And you said you talked to Paul Stafford, as you said, is also going to be an assistant coach there. How much communication have you been having with the other coaches, especially uh, the head women's coach, Matt Kredich? Uh, we had a conference call. There's been some emails. Um, to this point, that's about it. But um, they've been coming pretty regularly with the emails and, and, and things like that. So uh, I think that we'll mesh together really well when we get to Houston for our, for our meeting to, to head to the airport to go to Russia. And I would imagine one of the things you're really excited for is to be able to coach a couple swimmers you used to uh, work with, Andrea Kropp and Megan, Megan Hawthorne, they used to swim with you at Rattler. Uh, when was the last time that you uh, had been able to work with them in the pool? Actually, Megan made the trip out to San Diego just a few days ago. We had a workout session together. Uh, she looks great. I haven't seen Andrea since the U.S. Open last summer. So. Um, I'm sure she's doing great. She had a real good NCAA, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see those girls again in the water racing. How long were you their coach at Rattler? Well, Megan started swimming with us when she was 10, so I've had her for 
you know, pretty much her whole career. And Andrea came over when she was 16. So I've only had her for her senior year in high school and then the past two summers coming back from college. It's got to be a great feeling for you, especially for some to see someone like Megan doing so well um, in the pool, making it to now an international squad. Yeah, Megan definitely works every day, uh, every week, every year. She just was somebody who hated to lose in the pool, and, and I think she's still that way. And that's one of the reasons why she's so successful. Any other swimmers that you've coached that have gotten at or near the level that Andrea and Megan have? Um, well, we had Tony Cox. Uh, he's He was an NCAA finalist in the 100 back two years ago for Robert and then this past year for Cal. So he was with us since age 13 or 14. Um, other than that, you know, mostly kids that reach junior national level. So Tony and Megan and Andrea have been the ones that have really put us on the map, I'd say. And I would imagine, like any coach, you, you see a, one of your swimmers on the team that's really young and you see potential in them to to make it to college and, and swim well and, and hopefully make NCAA finals and things like that. How do you how do you work with them through the years to get them to this level? Well, I wish there was a one-size-fits-all approach. Obviously, there's not. Um, our team has always been a fairly small, 100 to 150 range, so my group with the high school age kids has usually not been so big where I couldn't uh, separate lanes out quite often and have a sprint workout, have a stroke workout, have a distance workout. So I think that that really helped me get those those high level athletes to where they are. Yeah, and this team you're working with, the Coronado, is very small as well. Um, what do you like about the, the, the small team aspect? Well, I, I mean, I definitely would like to grow. So that's something that we're working on. Um, yeah, the team now about 140, 150 kids here in Coronado, and I think only about a dozen are over the age of eighth grade. So we're going to have a long time with this group. Um, yeah, you know, the personal attention you get to give the kids is great, but what you miss out on is the competitiveness to get in the group and to, you know, be the top dog at practice. It's, it's a little bit different when it's a small group. I would imagine, though, that the kids do like that personal attention that you're able to give them that sometimes these, these massive clubs um, can't provide to their swimmers. You know, you would think, and I think sometimes they do enjoy it, but sometimes as a coach you want them to be perfect all the time and probably end up giving too much feedback or too much attention sometimes so I think it it can go both ways. What do you like about uh, the team there at Coronado? I know you said you wanted to be bigger and it's small now but what do you like about the team? I know you've only been coaching here just a few months. Yeah I've been here 10 months. Uh, well we have great a great relationship with the facility, a uh, very supportive community. The team itself um, the kids play a lot of sports out here in San Diego, so trying to get them to really buy into swimming as a year-round sport is going to be a challenge. But, um, you know, what I can say I like about it right now is i got a great group of young, mainly girls, that are really ready to work hard, and they, I think they see what fast swimming is all about. And you were one of the co-founders of Rattler Swim Club, which you coached there for, I think it was like 12 years. What prompted you to make the move to Coronado? You know, I'd have to say it was probably more of just a lifestyle change. I felt like I was ready to make a move. I lived in Los Angeles for 15 years. Um, I took a trip to Coronado, and I, I just signed on the line right there. It was San Diego and Coronado, is a, it's a beautiful community, tons to do. Um, I love the weather, so I would say it's, it was just more of a of a lifestyle choice than, than anything that I had to do with coaching. We have great coaches and great kids back at Rattler, and it's, I'm glad to see they're doing really well. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, before we go, I, I as I was doing research on you, I found something that is becoming very common in the swimming community. You're a um, established guitar player. You played in a rock band, is that right? Uh, a garage band, yeah. We didn't really make it out of the garage. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been playing guitar since I was a kid, and it's something I I enjoy doing in my spare time. You know, this is just becoming a, something that we really need to do on the morning swim show. Is just have a, we have a we've had a lot of guitarists on the morning swim show from 
Um, Ryan Malum, who's now going to be a coach at Texas A&M, and a couple swimmers, Ian Crocker, obviously one of the most famous ones. I think we need to have like some kind of competition to find out who the best guitarist is. And maybe you know, if someone specializes in a genre, they can you know maybe be the best rock guitarist, or maybe we can have a we can have a category for best rock rock our garage band guitarist. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'd make that uh, that top list, but I I would definitely give you my best uh, Paul Simon or Sublime songs. Well, that's good enough for us. Maybe we'll have, we'll have to keep you definitely in mind, Kevin. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, good luck with the rest of the trip uh, at Flagstaff, and safe travels to Russia. Thanks a lot, Jeff. All right, so that was Kevin Bloom joining us in the Finis Monitor, and that will conclude today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. As always, we invite you to join us regularly on SwimmingWorld.com, on Facebook, and on Twitter for news and aquatic sports. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.